In the final days before his ascension, Jesus made an extraordinary promise to his disciples, a promise that extends to every believer, including you. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. John 14, 18. But how? Through another comforter, the Holy Spirit. Jesus assured them, the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. John 14, 26. This isn't just ancient history. It's a prophecy that burst into glorious fulfillment in the lives of those very disciples. Jesus chose ordinary men, fishermen, tax collectors, not the elite. Peter feared Matthew served money. John had a fiery temper. Yet, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, everything changed. Like a master craftsman, he turned these overlooked men into bold leaders who shook the world. Ordinary became extraordinary. Peter, who once cowered before a servant girl, now stood before thousands, his words piercing hearts. Matthew, who had collected taxes, now collected souls for the kingdom. John, the son of thunder, became the apostle of love. These men, once hesitant and hiding, became bold heralds of the gospel, standing firm even in the face of persecution. The Holy Spirit didn't just inspire them. He indwelled them, rewiring their very beings. Their transformation wasn't a mere change of occupation, from fishing fish to fishing men. It was a fundamental shift in identity. They moved from being spectators in the grandstands of history to becoming key players on its center stage, all because the King's Spirit had come upon them. This isn't just a tale of days gone by. The same Holy Spirit who turned those Galilean men from ordinary to extraordinary is alive and active today. He's not a relic in the museum of church history, but a living, breathing presence waiting to work in you. Just as he transformed fishermen into fishers of men, he can take you, yes, you, with all your perceived inadequacies and self-doubts and make you a mighty witness for the kingdom of God here on earth. Today, we're going to explore four amazing things that happen when the Holy Spirit comes upon a believer. And as we journey through these transformative effects, remember, the same power that turned timid disciples into bold apostles is available to you. Are you ready to move from ordinary to extraordinary? Let's dive in. Number one, newfound understanding of scripture. Have you ever stared at a Bible verse, reading it over and over yet feeling lost? Then suddenly, its meaning becomes crystal clear? That's not just good reading, that's the Holy Spirit at work illuminating your mind. In 1 Corinthians 2.14, Paul writes, The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. In simpler terms, without the Holy Spirit, the Bible can seem confusing or even nonsensical. But when the Spirit comes, everything changes. Let me share something personal. I remember when I first started reading the Bible with the Holy Spirit's guidance. I had always struggled to understand certain passages, but suddenly, the words began to make sense. It was as if the Holy Spirit was highlighting key verses and illuminating the context, helping me see how each part fits into God's bigger story. Before, I would often get bogged down in the details. Reading genealogies in Genesis or the temple measurements in Ezekiel, I'd think, what does this have to do with me? But with the Spirit's help, I began to see the bigger picture. Those genealogies? They showed me God's faithfulness through generations. The temple details? They revealed His desire for order and beauty in worship. I felt like I was reading the Bible for the first time, and it was life-changing. When I say the Holy Spirit turns Scripture into a living dialogue, I mean it stops being a one-way lecture and becomes a two-way conversation. It's like when you're reading and a verse jumps out speaking directly to your current situation. That's God using His Word to talk with you personally. And divine insight. 
That's not about becoming a Bible genius overnight. It simply means God helps you understand his heart behind the words. Take John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. Before, I knew this verse was about God's love. But one day, as I was feeling particularly unworthy, the Spirit whispered to my heart, You are part of this world I so love. Suddenly, I didn't just know about God's love. I felt it embracing me, flaws and all. This is what Jesus meant when he said the Holy Spirit will teach you all things, John 14, 26. He doesn't just help you memorize verses. He helps you grasp their meaning and live them out. Old Testament stories become mirrors reflecting your own journey. Paul's letters turn into personal coaching for your life's challenges. The Holy Spirit often works most powerfully in our weak moments. Maybe you're facing a tough decision and desperately open your Bible. Your eyes land on Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Before, it was a nice quote. Now, it's God's direct guidance like a lighthouse beam cutting through your confusion. Let's pause here. Close your eyes for a moment. Think of a Bible verse you've struggled to understand. Maybe it's a complex passage in Romans or a psalm that didn't quite resonate. Now simply ask, Holy Spirit, help me see this verse with new eyes. Move it from my head to my heart. Don't be shocked if, right now, that verse opens up in a way it never has. This, my friend, is just the beginning of what happens when the Holy Spirit comes upon a believer. Your Bible transforms from a good book into a living, breathing conversation with God, one where every word is customized by the Spirit for your unique journey. And the most beautiful part, this divine conversation is available to you every single day. Having seen how the Holy Spirit revolutionizes our understanding of Scripture, let's now explore another profound impact, how He enhances our prayer life. Number two, increased power in prayer. Now, let's move to the second extraordinary change, increased power in prayer. This isn't about praying louder or longer. It's about praying deeper with a connection so profound it transcends our own abilities. You see, prayer isn't just a religious ritual or a wish list we send up to heaven. It's a heartfelt conversation with our Creator. Yet how many times have you sat down to pray and felt stuck? The desire is there, but the words aren't. You know you need to pray, but you're not sure what to say or how to say it. In those moments, you're experiencing what every believer faces, our human limitations in prayer. But here's the breathtaking truth. In those very moments of weakness, the Holy Spirit steps in with supernatural strength. Listen to Romans 8.26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. When you're at your weakest point in prayer, unable to articulate your deepest needs, the Holy Spirit Himself, the third person of the Trinity, takes over. He doesn't just suggest words. He intercedes with wordless groans. This is prayer at its most profound, where your spirit and God's spirit commune in a language that transcends human speech. This is what it means for the Holy Spirit to quicken us in prayer. The word quicken in Old English means to bring to life, to vitalize. Just as God breathed life into Adam, the Spirit breathes life into our prayers. He quickens our spiritual senses, making us attuned to God's will. Suddenly, you find yourself praying not just for surface needs, but for root issues. Not just for physical healing, but for emotional wholeness. Not just for a job, but for your true calling. And here's something remarkable. As the Spirit quickens you, your prayers become more focused and fervent. James 5.16 tells us, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. With the Spirit's guidance, your prayers align more closely with God's will, making them incredibly potent. Moreover, the Holy Spirit brings a new dimension to your prayer language. 
Some believers experience the gift of tongues, praying in a spiritual language that bypasses their understanding. Others find their normal language infused with scriptural phrases and divine insights they hadn't studied. Either way, your prayers become richer, deeper, more aligned with heavenly discourse. The Holy Spirit doesn't just help you pray. He prays through you. He quickens your spirit, sharpens your focus, and aligns your heart with God's. Your prayers become more than words. They become conduits of divine power. This isn't just ancient history or distant theology. It's a living reality available to you right now. So step into this new dimension of prayer where your weaknesses become the stage for God's strength to shine. Your conversations with God will never be the same. Before we dive into the next part of our journey together, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to our channel. Your support not only helps us grow, but also spreads these messages to more people who need them. And as you do, may God bless you richly. Now, let's continue exploring the amazing works of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Number 3. Spiritual Gifts Manifest When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, He doesn't arrive empty-handed. He brings an array of spiritual gifts, uniquely tailored for you to build up the church. In 1 Corinthians 12, Paul lists these gifts, wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discernment, tongues, and interpretation. Each gift serves as a specialized instrument for God's work. Let's look back to the early church as depicted in the Acts of the Apostles to see these gifts in action. Consider the story of Peter and John at the beautiful gate, a vivid example of the gift of healing in action. They encountered a man lame from birth who asked them for alms. Instead of money, Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Acts 3, 6. The man not only walked, but leaped up, praising God. This miraculous healing was a clear manifestation of the Holy Spirit's power working through the apostles. Furthermore, the story of Stephen, full of grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people, Acts 6, 8. His ability to speak wisdom and perform miracles illustrates the spiritual gifts of wisdom and miracles, empowering him to boldly proclaim the gospel and defend it against naysayers. These gifts are not reserved for personal glory. They are divine tools to edify, encourage, and equip the church. Some gifts are dramatic, like healing or speaking in tongues. Others are more subtle, like administration or help. But all are vital for the body of Christ. Consider also Philip, who evangelized the Ethiopian eunuch. His encounter showcases the gifts of knowledge and evangelism as he explained the scriptures and baptized the eunuch, spreading the gospel further. The Holy Spirit's gifts are not mystical enigmas but practical realities. They are not reserved for the elite but distributed to each believer. I challenge you, seek your gifts. Ask the Spirit to reveal and cultivate them. Remember, you are not merely a spectator in God's story. You are a gifted participant. Your spiritual gift, activated by the Spirit, could be the miracle someone needs today. Now that we've uncovered the spiritual gifts the Holy Spirit brings, let's witness another powerful transformation, how He instills boldness in our witnessing for Christ. Number 4. Boldness In witnessing, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, a profound shift takes place. A holy boldness rises within, empowering you to be a fearless witness for Christ. This supernatural courage transforms even the most timid believer into a bold ambassador for the kingdom. Think about the disciples before Pentecost. These were ordinary men, often gripped by fear and doubt. Peter, the one who would become a great evangelist, denied Christ three times. The others fled when Jesus was arrested. Yet after the Holy Spirit descended, these same men were miraculously emboldened to proclaim the gospel without fear. In Acts 4, 
we see Peter and John once cowering in the shadows, now standing before the very men who crucified Jesus, declaring, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. This blazing boldness in the face of severe threats reveals the Spirit's empowering work. The transformation was so dramatic that the religious leaders took note that these men had been with Jesus. The very believers who had abandoned the Savior now could not be silenced or intimidated. The Holy Spirit breathed holy boldness into their being. This wasn't just a momentary rush of adrenaline, but a sustained strength that propelled them to take the gospel to the ends of the earth, willingly suffering beatings, imprisonments, and ultimately martyrdom for their unwavering witness. The book of Acts records their path, leaving a trail of light wherever the Spirit's fire led them. And this same Spirit, the one who shook the upper room at Pentecost, still works today setting hearts ablaze with holy zeal. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, excuses like, I'm not an evangelist or I'm not bold enough are burned away by his emboldening presence. Suddenly, sharing your faith is not a burden but a joy. The Spirit gives you impromptu words to say, Luke 12:12. 12, 12. He opens opportune times to witness. He instills courage to engage that skeptical friend or forthrightly share Christ with a stranger. You find yourself walking into situations you once may have avoided, compelled by the Spirit to be light in the darkness. This boldness does not come through human effort or slick tactics. It flows directly from the Holy Spirit's presence within you. As you allow Him to take the lead, a fortitude arises that cannot be explained by natural courage alone. It's a supernatural emboldening for the greatest mission on earth. Let this fire of the Spirit consume your fears and insecurities. Allow His boldness to make you a beacon displaying the glorious truth of Christ's love and forgiveness. Like those ordinary disciples who could not help but speak of Him, may you find yourself overflowing with a holy compulsion to share the greatest message the world will ever know. The time for timidity is over. The era of Spirit-empowered boldness has begun. Will you answer the call? Step out in faith. As we wrap up our exploration of the transformative effects of the Holy Spirit, let's briefly recap the incredible changes we've discussed. A newfound understanding of Scripture, enhanced power in prayer, the manifestation of spiritual gifts, and an undeniable boldness in witnessing. Each of these marks a significant step in our spiritual journey, revealing just how deeply the Holy Spirit can impact and empower our lives. Now. I'd love to hear from you. In the comments below, please share which of these changes you've experienced or which you desire to see in your life. Your stories inspire and encourage not just us, but everyone watching. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to work profoundly in our lives. Open our hearts to understand your word, enrich our prayer lives, reveal and develop our spiritual gifts, and grant us the boldness to share your love and truth with the world. May we be responsive to your spirit and experience your power transforming us every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us in this journey today. If you found this video enlightening and inspiring, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel for more content, and don't forget to share this video with friends and family who might benefit from it as well. Your support helps us reach more people and create more videos like this one. Remember, together we can spread the message of God's transformative power through the Holy Spirit.